Welcome to the Love Thy Lawyer podcast. I'm Lewis Goodman. Today, we're going to do something different. I'm going to talk with a client. Let me be clear, Tom Silva is not one of my clients, but he is a business person who has dealt with lawyers and the legal system. Tom is the owner of Eden Realty, located in San Lorenzo, California. He is involved in the development, rehabilitation, and management of residential and commercial income property in Southern Alameda County. Tom is born and raised in Alameda County and has strong family and business ties to the area. Tom Silva, welcome to Love Thy Lawyer. Thank you very much for having me today. Tom, you and I have known each other for a long time, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. Where are you speaking to us from right now? I'm speaking to you from Cherryland, Eden Township, Alameda County, California. Is that where your office is? Yes. How long have you been in this business? Since 1980. Can you tell us a little bit about what your business is? Primarily, we're owner-operators of multifamily rental housing in San Leandro, Hayward, and the unincorporated areas. And how long have you been in that business? Since 1978 as an investor and 1980 as a professional. Where are you from originally? Floresta Gardens in San San Leandro. So you're very much a local guy, is that correct? I've lived within five miles of the same place my entire life. And where'd you go to high school? Moreau in Hayward. That's the uh, rather famous Catholic school here in Hayward. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of us ancient mariners out there. And have you had any formal education past high school? A night school at Chabot. And also during various trade courses and other week-long courses over the time. But basically, it was a night school at Chabot. What got you interested in being in the real estate business? My parents were dry cleaners. They had a dry cleaning business in San Leandro. And although the cleaners provided our family with a good living, they worked hard at it. What they did is over a period of time, starting in the 60s, every other year they would buy a rental house. And when it came time to, for them to retire in 1980, they were able to sell the business and retire from the rents on the houses and go traveling and do what they wanted to do. And having grown up in the dry cleaning business, I was sick of it. I didn't want anything more to do with it. But I saw that they did well in real estate, and that's where I am today. You also have a fair amount of community involvement just beyond business. Is that correct? Yes, I do. Can you tell us a little bit about your community involvement? Yes, I've been very active in the San Lorenzo community for a very long time. Currently with the San Lorenzo Little League. Also active in various business organizations. I serve as the chairman of the San Leandro Rent Review Board. So in a number, I've also been active in our industry organizations. What do you really like about buying, selling, developing, and running real estate? It's satisfying. It really is for me. I mean, we're... We try to deliver quality housing, good value for our customers' rental dollars every day in what we do. And being able to run and work with a group of professionals, do it on a professional level. Are we perfect? No, but we, you know, we do a good job every day. And to me, being part of the team that does that is the most important thing, satisfying at the end of the day, good customer relations. That's really what is the best in satisfaction for it. Yes. How big an organization do you run? We have a full-time staff, of, and then we also have a construction crew. I've been a licensed general contractor for very, almost 30 years now, over 30 years, excuse me. And like we're working on a project in San Leandro, as we speak, that crew was five people, including myself. If a young person... We're starting a career. Would you recommend being involved in the real estate business? Yes, but not in California. Tell us a little bit about that. California right now is actually a very difficult place 
for a rental housing operator to be in. Specifically in Alameda County, we have an eviction moratorium for COVID right now, amongst other things. When I first got into my career in the early 80s, for the first couple of years, it was legal to have adults-only housing. That went out in 1982. A lot of people don't realize that. You know, and back then the rights were all, yeah, were really stacked against tenants. It swings to now where it's gone too far the other way. And it's very difficult to be able to work in an environment like that here in California when there is opportunity in probably 30 other states in America. How is actually being in this business met or different from your expectations about it? Being in business has met my expectations because I was born in a business. Remember, my parents were dry cleaners. As the oldest child, I was down there all the time. I got my learner's permit at 15 and a half, and I was driving my dad around the delivery truck. My 16th birthday, I went out and my mom took me to the DMV in San Leandro at the time, got my driver's license, and in the afternoon, I was making deliveries on my own. So I've been in business. I was born into business. So I understand the expectations of business. And it's, it's just, it's always been there. It, yes. Is there anything that you know now that you really wished you knew before you started into the real estate business? Oh, many, many, many things. Yes. Many, many, well, many things. Could you be things. specific about a couple of them? Sure. I would have liked to have had better people skills because in a lot of ways, oh, it's, Back then, it was kind of rough and tumble, especially in when I was doing the work in Hayward and with the cleaning out crack houses. And you learned how to deal with people on that level. And then you got to realize that you got to translate that level to other folks. You know, working in that type of environment made it difficult for some of the other things that followed. But better people skills definitely is a number one. I try to improve them every day. What do you think is the best advice that you've ever received? Be your own person and be true to yourself at the end of the day because you have to be yourself and be comfortable with yourself at the end of the day. Now, in the course of your business, have you ever had occasion to hire an attorney? Many times. Let's talk about that a little bit. In what circumstance? First off, estate planning. And having a good business attorney, because if you have a good tax attorney, you're able to set up your businesses to where it's most beneficial all the way around, especially when you tie into it, your estate planning and creating limited silos for liability purposes. So have you set your business up that way with like limited liability corporations? Yes, we're, we're a collection of single asset entities. And how many of those single asset entities do you have? <laughs> That's like asking a rancher how many cattle he got. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's a few. Okay. And what has your experience with lawyers been like? I mean, it sounds to me like it's essentially transactional work where you've had lawyers set up legal entities for you and help you with your estate plan. Um, as opposed to being involved in litigation, but correct me if I'm wrong. No, it's been the whole gamut. That I just started out with the tax planning because, you know, if you're in business and you have a substantial business, it has to be set up properly. I'm, in, I'm a plaintiff in the case right now. Okay, I got a deadbeat doc that skipped out on $70,000 in rent and we're going after him for it. Okay, so I have that. Maybe that's not a good answer. Okay, what do I have now? I have a litigation to collect a debt that's owed us. I have, through my work with the California Apartment Association, we have a number of different aspects that's going on. And we're actually working with folks in indirectly with County Council of Alameda County is another aspect of it. We have ongoing estate planning-ish matters. Those are the, with the areas that I'm actively working with attorneys at this time. What's your sense of lawyers? By and large, I'm very impressed with the professionalism of the industry. Okay. You know, I'm 
because I've worked with so many different lawyers over so many different ways and being a layman from the outside, I become got an understanding of sort of the nuances of the law, how it works. But I always have to go to counsel and say, okay, what about this? What about that? You know, where are we at? And when you're able to work with folks on that level and to have back and forth discussions, it's really strong. And I think you end up getting to a better place. So what advice would you give to lawyers in terms of dealing with clients? Well, the first one always is listen and understand that although this particular individual's matter that is before you is a routine one, it's not routine for them. Okay. Yeah, They're, I think that's really important. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's very, very important for clients um, and for attorneys to understand about clients that for us, oftentimes it's another case, it's another file in the cabinet. But for the client, this is the most important piece of legal problem and issue that they have. Yes. It, it, and you have to be able to draw out of them what exactly is going on because remember they're a bundle of nerves you know especially if they're under some sort of threat and being able to calm them down to engage in the dialogue with them yeah the meter is running and they're worried about the meter okay but that's you know that's de minimis versus the few moments of really getting the understanding the person that's sitting in front of you and the matter is they're bringing to you you know in general, have you been satisfied with your dealings with attorneys? Yes. Yes. And what, what, what sort of things worked and what sort of things would you change? Worked is obviously the communication being able to banter back and forth. And each one doing their homework is by parties, each one meaning, you know, the, the client and the attorney, because the attorney can't do his homework properly unless the client fully informs the attorney of what's going on. And it gives the documentation and such. What I would change or suggest to change, I understand the, the move to digital. And if there's a way that if for like mom and pops to be able to bring things in and get them digitized to get it into the system, I think that would help a lot. I know I scan and send things to attorneys constantly, but that's pretty difficult for mom and pops to do small clients. So there's any assistance there to help them through with the technology, that'd be really beneficial. What's your primary means of communication with the lawyers who you deal with? Telephone calls or emails or texts or what? All of the above. What do you think has worked well in terms of dealing with lawyers? Open communication, collaboration, time for all parties. You know, I have to be a timely respondent. They can't be sitting around saying, if, you know, my deadline's Tuesday, I can't call you on Thursday and say it's not there. You know, if it's Tuesday, it's Tuesday. But that's what's really worked is when we were diligent about it, you know, in a professional manner. Is there anything that you would change about the way lawyers deal with you or the way you've dealt with lawyers? Not really. No, it's always worked out well. I had some really good teachers early on, lawyers that schooled me, <laughs> schooled me very well in the, in the, in the art of law and the practice of law. And that helped a lot having, being able to good work with good quality people early on. What, what mistakes do you think lawyers make in dealing with clients? Not talking through the whole process for them because there are a lot of times people are going to be nervous. And they're not letting everything out. You got to kind of try to draw it out of them a little. I think that would be the one mistake that I hear from folks out there. In your dealings with the legal system, do you think it's fair? No. Why? It pays to have good representation. It's better to have very good, competent representation because of the complexities of the system. And the, especially the way that it's overloaded right now, you really have to have the ability to pay for good representation. I'm going to shift gears here a little bit, Tom. What's your family life been like and how has working in the real estate world fit into that or affected it? Family life is wonderful. Any day now, we're expecting our fifth grandchild, a little girl whose name's going to be Athena. So 
we're on pins and needles about that. Uh, the family, we work as a family business and we have family involved in the business. So we're all local. So it's, we're nearby each other. We see each other a lot. So it's, it's really helpful to have family and business working together. How do you define success? Being able to have peace of mind and enjoy your family and your loved ones around you. That is, to me, is the definition of success. What sort of things keep you up at night? Right now, we're in an era of uncertainty. And this next year or so is going to be difficult times for a lot of people. And what I'm fearful of this next few years is, is that we end up being kind of like we were back in the early 90s with a, a sluggish period of time, a few years of, of economic woe, unfortunately. And how people are going to transition through that. We, us as a society has been through a heck of a lot. We were running up and before the COVID, then COVID hit. It's been three years now. And now we're post-COVID and we're in this interest rate environment where the economy is being slowed down. You know, the brakes are being put on. It's going to hurt some folks and it's going to be difficult for people these next few years. Let's say you came into some real money, several billion dollars. <laughs> what if anything would you do differently in your life? I think I'd establish a foundation and charter the foundation to only spend its interest so that it perpetuated itself. Sort of like a, I don't mean to be on this level, but like a, Nobel Prize, but you know how it's self-perpetuating. You see it on the news hour on ESPN, all those foundations that are there. Set something up like that to be able to do more things that would benefit folks who are immigrants here to America. We need to do a better job of bringing our immigrants, supporting them, welcoming them. We need fresh blood, you know, or a nation or immigrants, unfortunately, right now. Immigration is a, a really sensitive topic for people, but to really create the opportunities for first generation people to establish footholds and thrive here in America. Let's say you had a magic wand that was one thing you could change in the real estate world and the world in general. What would that be? To lower the temperature and bring down the animosity and the partisanship that we have to deal with every day. I mean, we're all, Leo, we're all in this one blue marble. We got to go along to get along. If there's some way that I can sprinkle the magic dust to make that to where everybody would be able to go along to get along, that's what I would do. Let's say you had a Super Bowl ad, 60 seconds on the Super Bowl. What would you like to say to the world, to the nation, in that very very large forum i would use i would do something along the lines of rodney king's famous words can't we all just get along is there a way that we can go along to get along we're all on this blue marble together yes folks can't we get along better with one another there's got to be a way tom if someone wanted to get in touch with you to talk about real estate or anything else, what would be the best way to contact you? The best way to contact me is by email at tom at edenrealty.org, O-R-G. That'd be tom at E-D-E-N-R-E-A-L-T-Y dot org, O-R-G. Tom, is there anything you want to talk about that we haven't touched on in this discussion? Yes. I'd like to talk a little bit further about the current state of affairs and the tensions that we have within the rental housing industry in Alameda County. We are at a point now where we still have the eviction moratorium that's been in place for going on three years. There's a lot of different cross currents that are going on with it. But the biggest problem is, is, is that it's reached a fever point to where facts don't matter anymore. 
Okay. It's all about emotion. It's all about being afraid. It's all about understanding that sometimes things happen and it's all about understanding that we got to go along to get along. It's understanding that they're afraid of this eviction tsunami, but you know, we all know how, well, at least a lot of us know how hollowed out our courts are and how the funding has just diminished for it. And there really isn't, it's the works are totally gummed up. And this is not a way to, to have a, to run our community. It's not our way to, to have a essential industry like rental housing and our customers interact with one another. It's become so polarized and it, the, the temperature just really needs to come down. Tom Silva, thank you so much for joining me today on the Love Thy Lawyer podcast. It's been really interesting getting the client perspective. Thank you very much for having me, Lewis. I definitely appreciate it. And thank you to the Bar Association for making this possible. Thank you. That's it for today's episode of Love Thy Lawyer. If you enjoyed listening, please share it with a friend and follow the podcast. If you have comments or suggestions, send me an email. Take a look at our website at lovethylawyer.com where you can find all of our episodes, transcripts, photographs, and information. Thanks to my guests and to Joel Katz for music, Brian Matheson for technical support, Paul Roberts for social media, and Tracy Harvey. I'm Lewis Goodman. We're going to need to cut that a little bit. I stumbled there. I want you to understand you can start anything over. We can edit anything out. I'm going to back up. Let's, let's give me a moment. Let me get back to one going again. I know we were on a train, but I got lost.